why is it that half the people that have heart attacks have low cholesterol and half have high cholesterol? Again, th that's not even a correlation, okay? There's not even like 60, 40, oh, there's a slight increase. No, 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 it's, it's dead even. You can't say that cholesterol causes heart disease if you reduce cholesterol and heart disease rates increase. If anything, you say that's protective. And in fact, that's what we're actually seeing in the literature. As Richard Feynman, a physicist, said, it doesn't matter how brilliant your theory is and it doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with the experiment, it's wrong. You can't say that cholesterol causes heart disease if you reduce cholesterol and heart disease rates increase. If anything, you say that's protective. And in fact, that's what we're actually seeing in the literature. Okay, so another uh, piece of, uh, of, of fraud and, and misrepresentation was, the, was of the Framingham study, which is a large 30-year, 20, 30-year um, uh, study. That, it's one of the cardinal studies in, in cardiology, okay? So these results actually were misrepresented by the American Heart Association, which is, which is pretty incredible, okay? So the original Framingham study actually found that if you dropped your total cholesterol by one milligram uh, per deciliter, you actually increase your coronary mortality and total mortality by 11%, okay? So as your cholesterol went down, your mortality rate went up and heart disease um, deaths went up. Okay, that's that's significant. Okay, but the American Heart Association two years later fraudulently claimed that the Framingham study found that a one percent drop in total cholesterol equated to a two percent drop in uh, coronary heart disease risk. Okay, that that's academic malpractice. All right, that's fraud. Okay, another very famous uh, researcher was Ansel Keys. This guy is the guy who came up with the recommended daily allowances, and so he was he was quite well known. He did and uh, he did something called the Seven Nation Study, where they found seven nations, and you as you uh, increase the amount of cholesterol that they that they had in the population. You also saw this parabolic increase of uh, heart disease as well. So there's a, oh, look at that. That's conclusive. Well, no, that's that's a correlation. That's not a causation. And the problem with this is that he had data, full data for 23 countries, not just the seven that he used. And if you plotted all 23 of those, there isn't even a correlation. It's scattered all over the map. So there isn't even a correlation. They've known this for 60 years now. That there's no correlation between increased heart, uh, increased cholesterol and heart disease. Okay, And it turns out that he was actually a paid shill by the sugar industry as well. He's bought and paid for. This is, this is a matter of record. Okay, this, there's, there's clear documentation of this. You know, this goes on and on. I and mean, there's obviously industrial research that goes on and these companies have a vested interest in, in, in protecting their product and so forth. And sometimes these things are legitimate, you know, when they're when they're being uh, you know, falsely vilified. But at the same time, you know, Coca-Cola is going around paying for research to uh, for people that that say that sugary drinks don't cause weight gain. So, you know, I mean, they, you have to look at where the money's coming from. And the problem with these things is that they never disclosed where the money was coming from. So, again, that's another piece of fraud because these professors and academics are supposed to, you know, are required to uh, say where they're getting funding from, uh, from and if they have any uh, financial interests and so forth. These guys are being paid. They need to disclose that, okay? That's fraud to not disclose that, okay? So, you know, more recently, you, we have had studies with 140,000 patients uh, that had heart attacks in the U.S. and showed that half of them had low LDL cholesterol, okay? So if cholesterol is just the direct cause of heart disease, why is it that half the people that have heart attacks have low cholesterol and half have, have high cholesterol? Again, th that's not even a correlation, okay? There's not even like 60, 40, oh, there's a slight increase. No, 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 it's, it's dead even. Okay, it, it, it just not connected. There's another study that had the same sort of findings with, with, with you know, 100, over 100,000 people found again, 50-50 split in uh, high and low cholesterol. And these guys still said, oh, but you need to get your cholesterol lower. And so at three years follow up, the study showed that those who had still had low cholesterol had two times the death rate of those who had higher cholesterol or high cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, okay? so. Again, this is making it look like cholesterol is actually protective and it's actually good for you. And, and in fact, it is. Okay, this is a vital um, uh, component in your body. Okay, 
So again, there isn't even a correlation. There was never a correlation. And in fact, there's an inverse relationship between heart disease uh, and, and uh, total mortality, infection rates, cancer rates, and uh, LDL cholesterol, okay? So, you know, as Richard Feynman, the physicist said, it doesn't matter how brilliant your theory is and it doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with the experiment, it's wrong. Okay, so we did this experiment. We played this game with hundreds of millions of people in America and now billions of people around the world and it's wrong, okay? Heart disease rates go up if you drop cholesterol, okay? So, gotta start from scratch. So, starting from scratch, what really causes heart disease? Well, it's complex, there's a lot going on here, but it's a, an inflammatory disease process uh, that is in part caused by sugar molecules binding to proteins on LDL cholesterol and, and SDLDL, these are small, dense lipoproteins, okay? These are, these are different characters. They respond differently in your body, okay? And these are actually metabolites of fructose and alcohol, okay? So if you're not eating sugar, you're not drinking alcohol, you're in much better shape anyway, okay? So... When sugar binds these things, it's called glycosylation or glycation, so the, the glucose molecules physically fuse and, and make these things act uh, improperly or not work at all. And fructose actually has a much higher glycation rate, okay? So again, fructose is a, is a nasty actor uh, in this whole process, okay? So when they bind to this, they knock out the receptors um, that, that, uh, that allow your liver to take them in, okay? That's the ApoB100 receptor, okay? Um, when this gets knocked out and there's only one, so you lose that, that's it. The only thing that can take it up are your macrophages, the scavenger receptors on your macrophages. And they just keep sucking these things up because they have an unlimited supply to, uh, unlimited capacity to take these things up and they form these giant foam cells, okay? There's more than that. You need, uh, uh, you know, you know, damage to your arterial walls and then these actually, you know, will, will invaginate into that uh, defect, okay? Um, and then form an atherosclerotic plaque, okay? So if you don't have damage to the, to the tissue, you don't have damage to the interior lining of the, of the vessel, you know, it do, you know, it doesn't really matter what else is going on because it's not gonna be able to get, get in there and cause a plaque, okay? So again, this is part of a larger disease process, okay? But again, this is a large disease process. It's not as simple as cholesterol in, heart disease out, okay? And that's, and that's the point. So high blood sugar will increase this reaction, okay? And fructose does this even more, as I said. So, uh, you know, this is why, you know, diabetics have a much higher rate of heart disease, okay? Because their, their blood sugar is always really high. They have peripheral insulin resistance, which, which all plays into this, okay? So um, cholesterol is involved, obviously, but, you know, sugar is the actual, sugar and carbohydrates are the actual driving factor here in this inflammatory process. And it's only certain types of cholesterol. Again, it's really the small, dense lipoproteins uh, that are really causing a problem. And these, again, are metabolites of uh, fructose and alcohol, okay? Because you know, as I mentioned in other things, as Lustig shows, fructose is metabolized into the same byproducts as alcohol is, okay? So you get the same disease processes as you do from the breakdown of alcohol as well. 